The Very Hungry Caterpillar's Three Plums? Check. Charlie's Golden Ticket? Check. Robin Hood's Bow and Arrow? Bullseye! Calling all Puffineers! The Puffin Library of Made Up Things is now open, but only the most imaginative of Puffineers are allowed to enter. So come and join us as we enter the weird, wacky and wonderful worlds of our author's making. That's right, if you're looking to journey to the outer realms of imagination, you've come to the right place. Hey, look at us, we're finishing each other's... Sandwiches! Sentences! A place beyond your wildest... Ice creams! Dreams, Ben, I meant a place beyond your wildest dreams. Dreams and ice creams, then. Now I'm hungry. Where was I? Oh yes, welcome to the Puffin Podcast, Mission Imagination. So, who have we got here in the Puffin Library of Made Up Things today? Hi, I'm Skylar Ray. I'm Ben. Let's kickstart today's episode with one important question. Would you rather lick a bin or lick the bathroom floor? <laughs> lick the bathroom floor. I think my bathroom floor is quite clean. Would you rather be in a room with dancing crocodiles or tigers? Tigers? Because it would be funny. Just seeing animals dance. I prefer tigers as well, because tigers are cute when they're cubs. Would you rather be an alien or a superhero? I'll go first. I'll be a superhero, because they're the the greatest. Like, who wouldn't want to be a superhero? You get a cape, you get superpowers. I would be an alien, yeah. I just... I want to be an alien. Okay. And finally, a brilliant listener choice was sent in from Phoebe from London, who's eight years old. And she asks, would you rather eat something spicy or drink something bitter? Oh, that's a good one. Would you reckon, Puffin is? Ben? Eat something spicy, because I'll eat, you know, them Chinese, like, meat you get. That's what I'll eat, because I love them. Oh, that's good. That's good. And you, Skylar? I would eat something spicy because I really like spicy stuff like hot wings. I love hot wings too, yes, we got good taste, we got good taste. Look who's just popped the kettle on. It's only Jen Carney with a cup of tea and biscuit in hand. I'd love a cuppa. Thanks, Jen. Now, important question. Do you like to dunk your biscuits in your tea? And if so, how long for? Hello. Well, I dunk some biscuits, mainly those that I can't dismantle like a plain digestive, which I've discovered are perfect if you dunk them for six and a half seconds, because any longer and you'll be drinking mush instead of tea. A crucial question we had to get out of the way. The timing of the dunk is serious stuff. Now, Jen wrote The Accidental Diary of Bug, the hilarious diary of Billy Upton Green. Get it? B-U-G, Bug? and features some of Billy's observations, a heist, and the biscuit laws. What are your initials, Puffin Ears? B-R-W. So you are called... Brum. S-R-M. Srum. (laughs) Srum. (laughs) Brum and Srum. Hello. At least you're not Phoebe Olive Orwell. Can't get much worse than poo as your initials. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me, Jen, do you have a favourite biscuit? So my ultimate favourite biscuit is a Tunnock's tea cake because I love peeling off the thin dome of chocolate and then getting all that white goo out with my tongue and then eating the biscuit base. And I even like the wrappers that tea cakes come in, like the, the silver foil, and I like making things with them, like little chalices and whatnot. I could talk about biscuits forever. I will if you want me to. I hope you've all got your passports ready because we're going on an adventure. Jen, first up. Where are we going and how do we get there? Well, today we're going to Biscuitville. And Biscuitville can only be accessed by the secret trapdoors that you can find in the biscuit aisles of supermarkets, if you look closely enough. And these trapdoors, they open onto helter-skelter slides. And um, you can grab a tin of biscuits to ride on to make the ride a bit smoother as you go down. Come on, everyone. Let's head to the biscuit aisle of our favourite supermarkets then. Don't forget, you lovely lot listening at home can join us too. Grab a pen and paper and a few digestives, of course, because we're off. Goggles on, helmets on. Let's get going in three, 
two, one. Well, that was a bit of a crash. But what's on the floor? It feels spongy. Well, the floor is made of cookie dough. It's lovely and squidgy to walk on. It smells amazing. Can we eat anything here? Well, you've come to the right place if you're hungry, Ben, because all the rocks and the hills are made of chocolate chips and chocolate chunks. And the buildings, they're made entirely of biscuits. Those brown ones, they're bourbons and chocolate digestives. And the yellow ones, they're custard creams. And even the trees here grow chocolate cookies. And look at the petals on the flowers. They're chocolate fingers and pink wafers. And the wheels on all the vehicles, they're wagon wheels and Oreos. So if you're hungry, you're in the right place. Just grab a biscuit from anywhere because they grow back instantly. Don't eat one of the living biscuits though. And are there any friends or foes here? Well, the inhabitants of Biscuitville, they're a mixture of people. So we've got like the gingerbread people. They're a really kind race of people. They're always smiling. And there's the hobnobs. Hello. They're a bit mean and snobbish. Oh. And you should avoid them really at all costs unless you want to be insulted. Who have we got here? You'll also see shortbread dogs, Kit Kats, and if you're lucky, the odd Jaffa bird. Oh, and how could I forget about the penguins? They're chocolate biscuit birds, and they spend most of their time in the Mint Club. And that's a comedy venue where lame jokes are shared every minute. Now, I've got to keep these lot on their toes. Jen, what rules do we need to know in this land? Well, in Biscuitville, there are a few rules that you've got to follow. So don't talk with food in your mouth. Try not to laugh at the penguins' jokes. Avoid eating the living biscuits. Always eat biscuits according to Billy Upton Green's very serious biscuit laws. And finally, and now this is the most important, so listen up. Never, ever step on a sleeping hobnob. You might be able to hear one snoring over there. This last rule is never to be broken. The consequences are disastrous, to say the least. Got it, guys? I hope you're listening. Keep it golden and we'll be good. Tell us more about the land, Jen. Well... Through the centre of Biscuitville runs the Rocky Road River, which you can taste if you want, it's delicious. You could even grab hold of a party ring and ride the rapids down to Jammy Dodger Palace. That's where the Queen of Biscuitville lives, Billy Upton Green. Every day, you'll see her tending to her biscuit garden where she grows the biscuits of your future, like cookie creamy crumble, ginger eclairs, caramel chunkers, quadruple chocolate sandwich creams, strawberry digestives. And more as well. And Billy is actually also responsible for setting all the biscuit laws. So be careful not to break them. For example, custard creams must be split into two and the cream has to be scraped out with your teeth. Rich cheese have to be dunked. All the chocolate has to be licked off a chocolate digestive before you bite it, for example. What's your favourite biscuit? Well, when I come to Biscuitville, what I like to do is I like to eat the bourbons from the building. So you might find like a door with a doorbell that's a bourbon. So you just take it off and eat it and suddenly a new doorbell will grow. So it's it's such a good land because everything regenerates itself. And what's the sky made out of? That's a really good question. The sky is made out of tea and tea bags. And, you know, when it rains, it's tea that falls down from the sky. So everybody usually walks around with a mug in their hand. And then when it rains, all the tea goes into the mug and then you just grab a biscuit from next to you, dunk it in. It's it's amazing. I'm pretty full from all those delicious biscuits. I think I need to lie down now. Hey, guys, I'm quite the comedian. Why don't you see penguins in Britain? I don't know. Why don't you see penguins in Britain? Because they're afraid of whales. Ha ha ha, real funny. Oh, no, unhand me. One is not for eating. Uh oh. Did you just? I didn't mean to. The hobnob was sleeping so quietly, I didn't even notice him. Oh no, things are starting to crumble, literally. All the biscuits in Biscuitville are crumbling into nothing. Quick, Skylar Ray and Ben, come over here. Come, 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 come. Where's Jen gone? She's over there. Hey, Jen, look out. There's a giant carrot tree about to fall on you. And the floor beneath us is turning into cauliflower. I hate cauliflower. It's the worst. Ew, it stinks. It wasn't me this time, I promise. Okay, okay. Don't panic. I'm sure there's some instructions about this somewhere in Biscuitville's guidebook. All right, let's see, let's see, let's have a... Oh, that's right. Here we are. It says, 
if you break a rule, there's only one way out. You need to solve the riddle, ask the author, if in doubt. Get Jen! We gotta get out of here! Get Jen! 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 Can you all hear that? It's a ticking noise. Oh, that was a close call. I was nearly swallowed up by the river. It's turned into a stream of cabbage juice. Right, I've managed to find a riddle set by the Biscuit Queen. She's pretty angry and she said we've got to solve it before her cherished cookie dough garden morphs into a bed of cucumbers. Come on, Puffin Ears, I know you've got this. Listen carefully. Listeners at home have a think too. This place is a building where spines are on show. Have stamped what you fancy and then off you go. Travel to worlds imagined by others or learn some new facts while under your covers. Then return to this place and choose something new and you'll never be stuck for something to do. What building am I? Oh, I don't know. I'm not too sure. What do you think, guys? Oh, I, I don't know. A castle? A castle? I don't think it's a castle. Hmm, where can you go with somewhere with spines on show? Oh, guys, I don't know. Oh, wait, is it a library? A library? I think it's a library! Yes! Whoa! And we're back. We escaped. That was a close call. Feels good to be back in the library. Check out what I brought back with me. Oh, wow. You brought a Kit Kat. What should we call him? Junby. Junior Ben. <laughs> Shall we keep him safe in the library? Yes. What were your favourite parts of the magical Biscuitville land before everything got a bit weird? The cookie dough floor. The penguins. The cup of tea sky. Well, I have to say a big thank you to you, Jen, for sharing your magical, mystical Biscuitville with us. We'll think twice about stepping on hobnobs or laughing along to penguin jokes next time. I think maybe we'll go somewhere a bit less chaotic with our next author, Rashmi Sirdesh Pandey. Some of our listeners have sent in some stories from their magical worlds. Let's take a listen. I am Brianna. My magical world would be a world of adventure where you would learn to do all sorts of things. Hello, I am Aaliyah Gabriel. In my world, it would be a walk park and everyone would eat donuts and have fun. I'm Verinda Bale and my world would be full of high-tech robots, animals and etc. The dinosaurs would be still alive and magic would be real. A world full of robots and dinosaurs? Hmm, that sounds cool. Thanks so much for sending those in. If you want to be in an episode of the Puffin Podcast, send us a voice note or email to puffinpodcast at penguinrandomhouse.co.uk and tell us more. And for more exciting summer holiday activities, head to puffin.co.uk forward slash podcast. Before we go... Can you tell us more about the Accidental Diary of Bug? I would love to. So, it's a contemporary diary-style book. It's packed with doodles and basically a very funny 10-year-old called Billy. She hates spelling so much that she accidentally, but actually it's completely on purpose, uses her spellings practice jotter to keep a diary. And in it, she draws and she writes about all the funny and interesting things that happen to her over the next few weeks. So there's a new girl in her class who seems to be trying to maybe steal her best friend. There's a thief in the school who's randomly stealing things from the school staff room so she's keeping tracks on that. There's also an exciting wedding and of course there are lots of biscuits and activities that you can get involved with. I think through the magic of podcasts we might be able to have a listen. Cue the audiobook. Right now it's Sunday night and, as usual, Mum has sent me up to bed at what she calls a reasonable hour. But what is actually too early to even think about pyjamas? I expect she thinks I'm fast asleep already. But look, I'm under my covers, writing in this jotter, which will probably contain one of the spellings I need to learn at some point. So it's basically her fault I'm wide awake, I am H.O., in my humble opinion. I'm as snug as a bug in a rug. In fact, totally excellent idea alert. Goodbye, dreadfully depressing spelling strotter. Hello, incredibly handy, stay awake doodle diary. Spelling strotter, S-A-D diary. Result! 
Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Puff and Podcast, Mission Imagination with me, Skylar Ray. And me, Ben. Don't forget to break some rules every now and again. No, that's not our final message. Don't forget to flush the toilet. Nice. You guys can hit the follow button for weekly episodes to be delivered to wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you. See you next time. Don't forget, rate and review us so other Puffineers can join in on the adventure. Keep on reading and dreaming, everyone. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. You've been listening to Mission Imagination, a Puffin podcast created by Puffin Books, produced by Mags Creative. Hosted by me, Baba Tunde Aleshe, with Puffineers, Skylar Ray Mannering and Ben Ray Ward. <laughs>